Trading USA. Yo 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 y
and their wives' lovers are voting for him, so he's not too worried about that group. Now, VP Harris, uh, again, as I mentioned, she's just the first presidential nominee in decades not to attend the event. Instead, she did address the audience with a pre-recorded video where she made several jokes about Trump in a skit with comedian Molly Shannon, Shannon excuse me, noting that there's a, a fact checker in the room that night, and we'll just let's just hear who that fact checker is. Just so you know, there will be a fact checker there tonight. Oh, that's great. Who? Jesus. And maybe don't say anything negative about Catholics. I would never do that, no matter where I was. That would be like criticizing Detroit in Detroit. The church cares for the sick and feeds the hungry, supports families with housing and education, and in times of disaster, provides not only essential supplies, but also, and so importantly, a sense of hope. So I never heard of this dinner in my life. So it's like I a Catholic either. dinner that's like comedy. Yeah, as well, it's, it started off with doing charities. Now in the last couple of years, it seems like more of a roast in the last couple of years. I was like, I yeah. never heard of it. She getting in trouble for not being there in person. Yeah, yeah. I'm, all, I'm all for you know uh, humor. You know, I like to bring humor anywhere, but I didn't know that it was a Catholic comedy comedy fest. Like, it, was I, a, it wasn't a comedy fest. I think the last couple of years it came a like comedy fest. Everything it just jokes. turned that into was, a roast. All of that with jokes and sets yeah, but it. before that, it wasn't. It oh, just okay. turned into it. Oh, okay. Yeah, so they're well, saying that. Uh, who was Alfred E. Smith? I didn't. I don't. I, I didn't bother to look any of this up. I'm asking who was like who. Oh my goodness. I'll look it up. <laughs> yeah, look it up, please. So while tr um, while Trump was also in New York, he made a stop at a barber shop in the Bronx. Um, uh, Trump made an unannounced uh, campaign stop in the Bronx at Knockout Barber Shop, where some staffers got to shake his hand and ask him a few questions, including the shop's owner, Javier Rodriguez. Let's hear from him. We all seen it for ourselves behind cameras. I seen it in person and I feel like uh, he is who he is. I feel like I, I didn't get a bad vibe, bad energy from him and that's conversation start and I'm happy with the conversations we had. So some were wearing T-shirts that said make barbers great again and hundreds gathered outside. Of course, there was major uh, security. There was a huge security presence with um, local law enforcement in addition to the feds and uh, Secret Service. But some were saying that, you know, hey, I was able to just ride my bike right through the line. And this is concerning considering, you know, all of the events that have happened and the attempts on uh, former President Trump's life. So um, with 20 days until the election, or excuse me, less than 20 days until Election Day, former President Trump's running mate, uh, J.D. Vance, he rallied in Pittsburgh where he slammed VP Harris on the topic of Social Security and Medicare. Let's hear from Vance. Kamala Harris and her, and her, you know, her, her friends in the media, they, they will say that somehow Donald Trump doesn't support Social Security and Medicare. Donald Trump is fighting to protect Social Security and Medicare every single day. I'll tell you what is going to bankrupt Social Security and Medicare, and that's Kamala Harris's plan to give Social Security and Medicare to illegal aliens who have no right to be here. Mm, not so sure that that's the truth, but um, yeah, well, yeah, elsewhere on the uh, trail, uh, Harris is running mate Tim Walls. He was on the campaign trail in North Carolina with former President Bill Clinton. So, um, VP Harris actually spoke about Medicare, and we'll get into those comments at 7. So, yeah, stick around. All it's right. From 6 a.m. Thank, thank you, Morgan. Everybody else, get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, phone lines are wide open again. 800-585-1051. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. This is your time to get it off your chest. Whether you're mad or or blessed. 800-585-1051. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? Hey, yo, DJ Envy. Good morning, man. This is Coach Davis, Charlamagne the God. Coach Davis, uh, what's Coach happening, brother? How y'all doing? Good morning. How Lauren are you? Lauren LaRosa's here as well. Yeah. Oh, I'm a... Who? Lauren LaRosa. She said what's up. He, he said, said what's up. Oh, okay. I said, I said, I said Ms. LaRosa, how you doing? I didn't hear you, brother. Listen. No problem. Hey, listen. I need, Charlemagne, I need you to do me a favor, man. I need you to add Mr. William Leonard Roberts II to your donkey of the day. Why? Um, that comment he made, you know, the streets is open when, uh, 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 in reference to Big Meech coming home. Yo, this dude, 46 years old, 48 years old, man. Come on. But the streets is open. Come on, man. He's not even built like that. Rick Ross is a, is a stolen moniker. You know what I'm saying? But cut, come on. What, what we need that, what we need right now? We need more than that. And worrying about the streets being open. I don't know what the context was. I didn't see what you're talking about. Well, I guess, and 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 the, with the fact of Meech coming home, 
you know, this is what he's saying. Rather than, you know, congratulations, you made it out. Now the, he, he said the streets are open. What does that mean? That's a great question. Not sure. Hello, who's this? How you doing? This is Blind Tommy. What's up, Blind Tommy? Get it off your chest, Blind Tommy. Look, look I'm uh, disappointed in y'all lack of support for the Blind Tommy community. Okay. The blind comedy community? I didn't know there was one. How, yeah. how many up there? What you trying to say? Oh, we yeah. don't see y'all? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't see us, y'all, man. You know, okay. remember, um, I took them, uh, Eddie, my number to you. You ain't never give me a call, man. Well, tell me, what's the vision for the blind uh, oh, comedy Jesus. community? Like, what, what, tell me. <laughs> what do you see in the future? That's what you're going to say? I don't, I, don't, I don't have no vision for the blind comedy community, but you know, I got some uh, ideas. You know? Okay, what's the idea? Uh, for you to uh, interview me. <laughs> oh, you want us to interview you? Yeah. Okay. Well, all right, well, hit up Eddie. Don't say that. All right, man. Yeah, yeah, hit, hit up Eddie, brother. It's true. That's our producer. Hit Eddie up. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got no problem. You come in here. You know, we see what you can do. <laughs> um, I did get my number. Did you see, did he still got it? Well, Eddie? Eddie's a he? Yeah. Eddie's a he, sir. <laughs> as far as we know. Well, we don't know what he identifies as. Yeah. No, I said, do he, do he think he still has it? Yeah. Well, hold on. We'll Eddie, you still got, got it? see. He's throwing his hands up like he don't see it. I don't know what the hell going on. No, oh, hold on, Blind Tommy. Hold on, Blind Tommy. Okay. Jesus Christ. Hello, who's this? Yo, what up, what up, what up? This is Big O with Big O Entertainment. Good morning, Lori. Good morning, Charlotte, Maine. Envy, I want to give y'all a personal <laughs> invite to my next big event, Charlotte, North Carolina. The biggest event, Nightmare Avenue, with Mr. Gangster Grills himself. DJ, DJ Drama. Drama. What, what is, is that? Lori? Yes, sir. Hmm? You call me Lori. It's Lauren. He, he didn't say Charlamagne right now. I'm sorry, Lori. Yeah. All right. My apologies. Don't beat me up. Hey, listen. Follow us on the ground. Big O E N T. That's Big O E N T. You don't got tickets? Hit us up on Eventbrite. We got you. All right, Big O. And shout out to Power 98 Rebel 107.9. All right, bro. Hello. Who's this? Hi. Good morning. This is Kenda from Harlem. Hey, Kenda from Harlem. I think you called earlier, but your phone was crazy. Definitely disconnected. I just wanted to say good morning to you guys. Good morning, DJ Envy, LL Cool Gay, Charlemagne. Um, I'm calling mm -hmm. in to shout out my daughter who's running for homecoming Duchess in Union High School in New Jersey. Okay. Vote Madison to pay homecoming Duchess 2024. Okay. Well, good luck to your daughter. Yes. Thank you so much. Shout out to y'all. But well, they got to vote for it, or is it is it faculty, or is it the students? How how, how does that work? Um, it's a the students vote. Um, they started campaigning um, yesterday. The students vote. She has like the cutest Coco Spider Man thing going on. And yeah, we wish her the best of luck. Well, what's her name again? Say her name clear. Madison Tapay for Homecoming Duchess 2024, Union High School in New Jersey. All right, vote for Madison Union High School. Good luck, Mama. Thank you so much. Good luck. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, hit us up now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. It's a new day. This is your time to get it off your chest. Wake, wake up. Whether you're mad or blessed. It's time to get up and get something. Call up now. 800-585-1051. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? Uh, hello, this is uh, James. Hey, James, what up, James, can you take us off Bluetooth for speaker, whatever you got us on, brother? Yeah, my bad, man. I was just brushing my teeth. I was, I was on hold. <laughs> but uh, does anybody else remember that when Donald Trump was president, he suggested dropping a nuclear bomb into a hurricane to stop it? I remember that. Yeah, I, I mean, how, just off that alone, just off that alone now, I, I just can't see him being president, man. Who, who, I mean, a fool in that dumb cannot be in the presidential office, man. And then on top of that, all the, the messed up stuff he said about war veterans, I'm a war vet. I, I don't, I didn't appreciate the mess he said about Senator McCain. The crazy part about it is not only did uh, Trump say that, he denied saying it. He said that it was ridiculous that people would think that he said it, but he actually said it. Oh, yeah, man, that man, uh, I can't, I can't. And I'm not I'm not saying this because I'm a huge Kamala Harris fan. I mean, she's a better pick than him, though. I mean, you shouldn't look. There, there's no such thing as a perfect politician. You know what I mean? You just look for the politician that you feel, um, you know, ha has your has your interests, has, ha ha has issues that mm -hmm. you care about. And, you know, the person that you think can be the most effective leader. Where you calling from, James? 
Oh, I'm calling from North Carolina. North Carolina, okay. You know, and according to 538's daily election poll tracker, Harris is currently leading in the national polls and has a 2.4 percentage point lead over Trump. I don't know what the hell that means. I just know it's going to be close, but you got to get out there and vote come November. And make sure you get out there and vote, brother. Hello, who's this? This is uh, Tank from Newport News, Virginia. Tank from the 757. What's up, brother? How y'all doing, man? Good morning, everybody. Good, man. We'll, I, we'll see you out there next week for, for Hampton and Norfolk State Homecoming. What up, though? Get it off your chest. Uh, so after seeing that Fox interview with Kamala Harris, Kamala. I guess my question is for the whole Breakfast Club: like, how does anybody really, how can anybody support her anymore after she kind of dances around every question, never answers anything directly? And then like us, us American people, we just want to know like what she has to offer policy wise, specifics and breakdowns and details. And instead of dancing around these questions, why not hit us with these specifics? So she might be able to persuade the Americans to vote for and I'm just not seeing that. You know, it's interesting when people say that because she lays out her opportunity economy plan every chance she gets. And then when she does that, she gets mocked for it. Right. And then, you know, you say she dances around questions, even though I hear her dance, even though I hear her uh, answer questions directly. But Trump literally told you verbatim that he does this thing called the weave where he'll start one place and then talk, 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 take you somewhere else. And never come back to what he was talking about unless he wants to. He literally said that to you on my man Andrew Schultz's podcast, but nobody ever brings that up and says he don't answer questions directly. Why is that? Right. But, okay, but when the American people go to ask Trump these questions, you hear him say, hey, how are you going to bring down the cost of living? Oh, well, we're going to bring down the cost of energy. That's where we're going to start, 50% in the first year. We're not hearing these specifics and these details breaking da- broken down. That's not true. Harris. We're hearing... That, 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 we're hearing, hey, um... Like Brett Breyer asked her two days ago, hey, um, Kamala Harris, do you feel like you owe this family of Lark and Raleigh an apology? Well, I'm deeply, deeply, you know, like, what What do you mean? You, she, said, she said, she said, she said, she said, she said she was sorry for what happened to that family. But once again, Brett didn't ask her about no policy. So, so you, he so, no, he did not. He, Brett, he, Brett didn't he ask her one, Brett, policy. Brett didn't ask her one policy question that whole conversation. He asked, so you you remember when he asked about the whole immigration thing? That's not a policy and question. Under her, under her, uh, under her administration, though. No, in the last three and a half years. That's not a policy everything question. Everything happening, it is related to the policy though, because it's her open borders. The CBP one app that she has, the, the accountability. She's she's allowed these things to happen. That's what I'm saying. Where's the accountability at when it comes to these things? The, the board she has an app. Called you can look it up. The border is a bipartisan issue. It's been a bipartisan issue. The border has been terrible under every da- under damn near every single administration. And it's going to take bipartisan legislation to fix the border. You can't fix the border with executive orders. It's going to take Republicans and Democrats coming together to create a legislation to fix the border. And guess what? They had that. And you know who shot it down? Donald J. Trump, because he didn't want to give the Democrats any type of win. Those are just facts. And I mean, I don't know what to tell you when you put facts on the table and present people with facts and they still don't want to see the facts. Well, get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. Now, we got Just With The Mess with Lon LaRosa coming up. What are we talking about? We do. We have some um, updates in uh, Liam Payne's uh, death. So we're going to get into those really quick. All right. We'll get into that next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Let's get to Jess with the Mess with Laura LaRosa. Rosa. News is real. Weather is hilarious. Jessica Robin Moore. Just don't do no lies. Don't do no lies. Just don't do no lies. 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 Don't do no So yesterday we had um, discussed um, Liam Payne passing away in Argentina and there were a lot of unanswered questions when we discussed it yesterday, but there have been some updates. So Argentina law enforcement is now saying they uh, gave a statement to the Associated Press and they said that they believe that Zane, I'm sorry, that Liam Payne jumped from the balcony. Now, there are some back and forth disputes about this because Mm -hmm. although they are saying that, they're not providing any information as to what they are using to conclude that. And they're Mm -hmm. not a hundred, like they're not saying the word suicide, but they're saying he jumped. So uh, uh, CNN and a couple other outlets did some more digging. Um, And at the same time, the prosecutor's office there is saying that because of the injuries that uh, Liam Payne sustained, they believe that he might not have been fully conscious at the time of his fall, which 
can lead to the theory that he didn't jump and mm-hmm. that he actually just fell. And they say this because of the position that his body was found in and the injuries from his fall. Now, the uh, the public prosecutor's report added that there were also a series of substances that were seized, that were res- uh, seized in his room as well, which indicate prior situation of alcohol and drug consumption. You guys remember yesterday we talked about everything that happened in the lobby at a hotel mm-hmm. and there were photos of different things being uh, broken and destroyed in his room. Yeah. So the police, when all this happened, got a call the day of and they responded to a call of an aggressive man who could be under the influence of drugs and alcohol. The hotel manager in Argentina is who called and on the phone there was a 911 uh, call obtained by the AP on the phone you hear the manager say a guest is overwhelmed with drugs and alcohol he is destroying the entire room and we need you we need someone to be sent please as the call went on they the AP is reporting that the manager got even more anxious and was saying basically they were really scared for him because his hotel room had a balcony now the balcony there are now photos of the actual hotel room that's what the manager said on the call yes wow yep they are like hey we're worried because you know he's frantic and something's going on Mm -hmm. and there's a balcony in his room Mm. um now the balcony people have started to dig into the hotel kind of what the structures of the hotel rooms look like the balcony is like four feet high liam was 510 it's a glass balcony and when you see the picture of it it's like you know it's easy to to see how someone could have went over everything at this point right now is indicating that he was alone when it happened we talked about the fact that his girlfriend was there but then she left so i mean it's still kind of up for question whether this was intentional or not but the statement that was released says that he jumped Mm. So that's unfortunate. It's very, very unfortunate. Again. It's very, very unfortunate, again. especially because he was on a. He had just posted a video on his YouTube channel not too long ago talking about he was celebrating six months of being sober from alcohol. Mm-hmm. So you know, it seems like he was battling with something for uh, for sure. Yeah. Now Zayn Malik, who was also a part of One Direction, broke his silence on the passing yesterday. He said, "Liam, I never got to thank you for supporting me through some of the most difficult times in my life. You were headstrong, opinionated." You gave no Fs about telling people when they were wrong. When it came to the music, you were the most uh, qualified in every sense. I lost a brother when you left us and can't explain to you what I give just to give you a hug one last time and say goodbye to you properly and tell you that I love and respect you dearly. I hope that wherever you are right now, you are are at peace and you know how loved you are. Love you, bro. Man, the direction was distraught yesterday. Yeah, uh, oh they're going to be for some time. Absolutely. You know, because, I mean, uh, One Direction, I think uh, Liam, what, was started in the group 16, 17 years old. Wow. So you kind of grew up, up with, with them, them, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, and they had so many different eras of fame. Yeah. Just yeah. reunited literally not too long before mm-hmm. all of this happened. So well, definitely rest in peace and condolences to his family. Yes. Yeah. Oh, you 1D now? I'm well, not. Well, you'll never be 1D. You're multiple. But, yeah. What? Oh, did pause. you just call pause. him a Pause. What you mean 1D? What, what happened? Are you shaming? Tell us about this 1D. You don't got no one stories? I do. Okay. okay. We're going to move on. We jump right I'm, on that I'm D. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Jumping on it. It's cowboy is crazy. All right. So Snoop Dogg was on the Today Show. And uh, watching Snoop Dogg is just always amazing because it's like Snoop Dogg has become... It's like he always Snoop Dogg is Snoop Dogg But it's in every facet of his life It's like he recreates And finds different ways For you to love him Right And he just does it so well So they're talking about A bunch of different things And one of the At one point He begins to talk about You know The love of him and his wife That they share Let's take a listen to that Hey let me get this brother together Real quick Ow It's 57 degrees And Mary Jane That's not the one Mm -hmm. So that's the second one Let's go to the other one first said no other one okay well in the the first clip that they in the first clip that we would have had um about him talking about his wife he talks about how because him and his wife have been together for so long Mm -hmm. she also manages his his career and he talks about the balance that she provides for him like she is especially he says when his mom passed away she was the person that was like don't worry about this over here i got it i just need you to get yourself together she's always you know encouraging him and i think and he's saying you know that's that's why he's been able to do as much as he's been able to do for so long and then they do this like very funny Snoop Dogg weather report Mm -hmm. where they bring up just the cities that are like Snoop cities Mm -hmm. weed related cities take a listen so he does it with Al Roker hey let me get this weather together real quick it's 57 degrees in Mary Jane Falls, Nevada. <laughs> That's right. And then I heard it was going to be 56 degrees in Stoner, Colorado. <laughs> That's right. 84 degrees in Blunt, South Dakota. <laughs> oh, yeah. right. Sliding on down to this area right here above the average highs. 70 degrees in Roach, Missouri. You understand me? We stay lucky in Kentucky. It's going to be 60 as we blaze and blaze Kentucky. You did? Yeah, oh, yeah. And over here, we got Pottsville, Pennsylvania, where it will be 60 degrees. And down low on the go, 
61 degrees at high point. Get that high point, North Carolina. <laughs> Okay. I think once, uh, you know, whoever becomes president, if they need to legalize marijuana all across the country federally, mm -hmm. and then we need to make Snoop Dogg America's symbol. The bald eagle, eh, it's, you know, it's, it's kind of over for that <laughs> eagle, right? Fly. You know what I'm saying? We need Snoop Dogg to be America's <laughs> symbol, but you have to legalize marijuana federally all across the country first and then make Snoop Dogg America's so, symbol. So you mean not, not just for marijuana, you just mean the symbol for like America? Repeating, I don't like repeating myself. Okay. Right. Everybody out there knew exactly right. what I meant. Right, Lawrence? Y'all having a little tiff in here. Yeah, this, 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 you know? I'm just asking. I just want to yeah, be okay. clear. I just want to be clear. Okay. Who broke up on the wrong side of the bed and this morning? And also Proverbs 18.22 says, he who finds a wife finds a good thing finds a good thing Amen. finds what is good and receives favor from the law and that's what some dog's career is given i pray not pray i know that that's what that's what i want like the way that snoop has been able to elevate <laughs> and be based you like this no i want a good Man, thing to that, i'm gonna be a good to wife point, Lord, switch side already you got to that point it's Lord. only been a couple don't, of please, weeks don't give up yet lauren it's, lauren it's, lauren it's you're only me, 31 it's 30 me here in white wow. prepared wow. to be at the wow. altar please don't give up wow. like that no that's what i'm looking for some stuff please Take I me. need something Take home. me, I'm yours, stud, please. <laughs> hey, you just ready to sacrifice yourself to the studs already? No, Take Carolina, she's coming home. out there this weekend. Hey. So. If I do go there, I don't know. Hey. You don't want what? Nothing. What, what's your type? She don't <laughs> care at this point. <laughs> just anything. <laughs> Vegas can't be choosers. And that Mom, is just what the this message is not happening. for Laura LaRosa. <laughs> Like, it is what it is. Accept it. <laughs> now, when we come back, we got front page news, so don't go anywhere. It's the Breakfast Club. Come on. Y'all are right. You're checking out the Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Laura LaRosa filling in for Jess. Let's get in some front page news. Now, some quick sports last night. Thursday night football. The Broncos beat the Saints 33 10. Major League Baseball. The Yankees lost to the Guardians last night, but they still lead the series 2 1. The Dodgers beat the Mets last night 10 2. Excuse me. And the Dodgers. Just lead that series three to one. And tonight, the Lynx take on the Liberty at 8 p.m. Eastern time. What's up, Morgan? What up, though? So um, let me just go ahead and say that tensions are rising over in the Middle East, okay? So Hezbollah is announcing a new and escalating phase in its war with Israel. The Iran-backed militant group made the announcement on Thursday saying they've killed 55 Israeli soldiers since the beginning of Israel's ground operations in Lebanon. The statement from Hezbollah did not mention the death of Hamas leader Yahya Sinwar, who was killed by Israeli forces on Wednesday. However, Vice President Harris says justice has been served following the death of Sinwar. Speaking in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Harris said, the world is a safer place now that Sinwar has, uh, is dead um, and he was killed by Israeli forces, adding that he was responsible for the October 7th attack on Israel last year. Let's hear those comments. The United States, Israel, and the entire world are better off as a result. Sinwar was responsible for the killing of thousands of innocent people, including the victims of October 7th, and hostages killed in Gaza. Sinwar was the mastermind of October 7, the deadliest day for the Jewish people since the Holocaust. Uh, VP Harris also blames Sinwar for starting the current war in the Middle East that, of course, has led to deaths, um, to thousands of deaths in Gaza. Now, while also speaking in Wisconsin, La Crosse, Wisconsin, to be exact, she promised to give tax cuts to 100 million middle class Americans, give $6,000 to new parents in the first year of their child's life to buy necessities. And she also laid out her plans in contrast to what former President Donald Trump said about, or excuse me, uh, his running mate, J.D. Vance, said about Medicare. Here's what she had to say about Medicare while speaking in La Crosse, Wisconsin. This is a matter of dignity, and it is a matter of your ability to participate in the workforce and be productive and have a quality of life. So we're going to change the system so Medicare will cover your ability to have home health care for your elder parents. Yeah, not to mention the Biden-Harris administration also made it so that, you know, those bills, those medical bills, they don't go on your record. So just keeping that in mind. Now, VP Harris also spoke on ab abortion rights, calling uh, for the revoking of Roe v. Wade uh, or calling the revoking of Roe v. Wade immoral and promising to restore reproductive freedom nationwide. Uh, she told the crowd that unlike her opponent, Donald Trump, 
we actually see real people and care about them. Uh, meanwhile, the Harris Walls campaign's HBCU tour is outside, much like you guys this weekend in North Carolina. Uh, today in Greensboro, Harris uh, will brunch with students, alumni, elected officials, and community leaders. While tomorrow in Charlotte, North Carolina, um, she will brunch with JCSU students. Oh, so she is showing up. Oh, so she is popping up. She, a- she around. She around. I was hoping, you know what I'm saying, she'd be around here. You know, Howard. Which one you said she going to again now? She'll be in Greensboro today. Um, That's North Carolina. I believe that's North Carolina A&T. Okay. And and then Charlotte tomorrow. The rest of y'all getting 10 walls. I I was all pulling up. (laughs) Charlotte may get 10 walls, you said, because, hey, Howard's homecoming is also this weekend. So I know that they are at least what I have heard is that they are preparing for a special, special guest um, on the on the campus of Howard University. Tim so. Walls. Y'all getting Tim Walls at Howard University. <laughs> nah, she'll probably show up to Howard. I think she um, should so, show up to Howard. So, of course, they will join HBC, HBCU students, uh, alumni, community to celebrate those homecomings. Um, and those speaking will highlight Vice President Harris's a new way forward agenda that will lower costs to protect our freedoms, uh, support HBCUs, and give every North Carolinian the chance to not just get by, but get ahead. Um, there's other things that they said they were going to lay out, but um, are you guys looking forward to the homecomings outside events this weekend? Now, Morgan, Lauren LaRosa just showed me something. It says, Morgan sent me the invite. Oh, she sent you the invite? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. That's it. All yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't That's say, because it doesn't say she's going to be there. It says that she's going to be, they're going to be talking about Harris and Walls. It is the Harris Walls homecoming tour. Okay. So, it is a matter of... <laughs> they don't need to have walls on them. Why? They just say Harris, man. Yeah. Why not? You He's a part one. of it. Yeah, not, not really, is he? You, I you mean, want I don't want to see him you nowhere... Don't want I don't want to see him nowhere swag surfing or attempting to oh, shimmy. Please. Oh, my God. You don't, you don't want walls on your yard? No. Walls got no. kind of quiet recently. She good. Hey, stay off the yard, they, please. They, Take him to the student center, and that's it. What Jay-Z the library. Said, did Jay-Z the say library. He, what Jay-Z said he had a spark when he started, but now he's just garbage. <laughs> he's just garbage. I don't think he's garbage, you know what I'm saying? But it's just like, I don't see the impact. He be chilling. Hey, we don't that's need that right now. That's we don't need problem. you chilling. I mean, chilling. Okay, we need you on the front lines, okay? You need a white man that excites other white people. <laughs> okay? Oh, I don't know if he's that white person that's doing that. Is he? No. Mm-mm. Oh, okay. Sheesh. Wag your fingers. Um, okay, and so let's bring things home to New York. Governor Kathy Hochul says any talks of her possibly joining Kamala Harris's administration should she win the presidency is not true. A journalist asked her about a report saying that Hochul aides reached out to Harris's team about a potential job working for Harris. And here's what New York Governor Kathy Hochul had to say about that. I love New York. I am not leaving New York. So... All that is false. There are people, there are bad actors out there, once again, purveying in lies. People are trying to create the notion that I'm not running for re-election, and I'm running for re-election. Yeah, there's a lot of people in that category. Yeah, so Governor Hochul uh, continue, says she continues to support New York City. Uh, Mayor Eric Adams, who was also battling federal corruption charges. Uh, the governor was challenged by a reporter who asked why she won't demand his resignation, um, but did demand Adams overhaul his top level staff who have not been charged with any crimes. And here's what she had to say about that. Stabilize the situation instead of having day after day after day of blaring news headlines about Who else has had an investigation? Who else's cell phone was taken? My focus is, is government still functioning at the levels that New York City residents deserve? That's it. I'll be watching to make sure that this is all happening. Um, This comes, of course, as numerous aides have um, from Adams administration have stepped down in recent weeks and also have resigned uh, after Hochul, of course, asked the mayor to clean house following all of those allegations, bribery charges, corruption charges and more. Yeah. So, again, I will keep you posted on that situation. That's your front page news. I'm Morgan Wood. Follow me on social at Morgan Media. And for more news coverage, follow at Black Information Network. Download the free iHeartRadio app and visit BINnews.com. All right, thank you, Morgan. Now, when we come back, let's open up the phone lines. 800-585-1051. Is doing background checks and research on your partner a red flag or a requirement? So, Lauren, when you're out... Well, are you dating? Well, the, the guys that you see, do you do background checks? For what? What you mean? Like, real background checks? Like, run it through, like, a real, like, dot-com report? I wasn't thinking about that, but do you? 
No, I don't go that far. But I do do car facts. Like, I see who we have in common and reach out and be like, yo, you know, what you know about this person? Are they mm-hmm. cool? Like, is it is it safe? Like, that type of thing. Okay. Well, let's talk about Why are you about looking that? at me like that, Charlene? <laughs> what is going on? You don't think... <laughs> you've been out of this for a long You're time. talking. I'm listening to you. You're looking at me like you guys... No, I'm 800 585 Do you do background <laughs> checks on the people that you're dating? Do you Why do you say I'm going to be hollering without even getting hit nowadays? Background checks on the brows. <laughs> let's, what? Let's discuss when we come back. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. It's topic time. Call 800-585-1051 to join into the discussion with The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Laurel LaRosa filling in for Jess. Now, if you're just joining us, we open up the phone lines, 800-585-1051. When you guys are out and about dating, are you doing background checks and research on your partner? That is the question. Now, Laurel LaRosa says absolutely positively yes. Now, what kind of background checks are you doing? Um, I'm asking or yeah, I'm gonna ask like people that are mutual to us. Like, so you go through his Instagram? Yeah, just I mean, even I might if I know you through somebody, I probably ask them. Or if I go through Instagram and see you have a mutual follower, mm-hmm. I might reach out and be like, hey, if the person I'm if I'm cool with that person, but I just need to know a little bit, like you know, what am I getting myself into? Is it worth the time? Because people come off very. When the last time you had to do that? Um, I think I just did that. Like a month ago. But you don't do background checks like to see if he was arrested, what he was arrested for I and all that stuff. I don't, but I do have a couple homegirls that do it immediately. Really? The minute they know your full name, yes, they do. A hundred percent. So, but what does that mean just because he's been arrested though? Like, what is, But you want to see what he's arrested for? I think people just want to know. Mm. One, of, one of my homegirls that does it, her mom is a former police chief. So mm-hmm. like, it's just, they've always just been in the practice of like, that's just what they do. Mm-hmm. But I think they just want to know. Like, it's a, it's a big safety thing for most women too, but... It's like safety, but then you you really just want to know, like, is it what it appears to be? Because the flags be so green in the beginning. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't have a problem with that. I think men need to do that, too. Mm-hmm. Ain't nothing I, wrong with that. I think when men start dating these women, they should be doing background checks. And even, even if it's not, like, going online to try to figure out a person's criminal background, just ask about the individual. Ask about the young lady. Do you know her? Yep. Who is she? What is she about? Is she a scammer? Has she set dudes up before? Yeah, right. You know, what's her body count? Mo- but most is she crazy guys, in some way, guys, shape, or form? Most guys do that. And the questions they ask, is she crazy? Mm-hmm. Who did she used to deal with? Like, mm-hmm. who was her last boyfriend? Is she disconnected from that situation? Because they want to know, like, all right, if I'm staying at the crib. Who's if her I'm, baby father? Yeah, like, that, it's, yeah, it's a absolutely. safety thing. But then they do ask, like, is she crazy? Because it's like, now they want to know, like, all right. Do you check horoscopes? One of our producers says uh, background checks include horoscopes. Yes. I so, think you should treat it like jobs. Go, I, to their, go to their social media history too. Yeah. I do that See too. See what they've been tweeting about. See what they've been posting about. Twitter, Instagram. I looked at tag photos because that's how you find the girlfriend that they saying that they don't have. Jesus. Um, so, I do. You said horoscopes. So what? Yeah. So who won't you date? What horoscope won't you date? I don't. I will date any horoscope, but so I just know what it? I'm getting because I know what I'm getting a little bit. Like I mm-hmm. always attract Pisces, and they. Hold nah, on, Nala. Let me turn your nah, mic on. Turn Nala's yeah, turn mic, on. Nala's mic on. Nala's in. Nala, Nala, what's up, Nala? I absolutely will never date a Virgo. Ever mm. again. We don't want you either. Oh, <laughs> oh I forgot your vocal. Taylor's in the background, like, yes. And I think I'm good off of Scorpios, too. I can they say so, really horoscope? so you base fun. everything off a of horoscope? I don't base everything off of horoscopes, but I'm definitely heavy into a horoscope. So if you mean a, a and gentleman background that's... checks are also essential because when I was in college, my homegirl brought this man over to the crib. We meet the guy, he's telling us about him. He's he's doing like all the bells and whistles, he's complimentary. Mm-hmm. Flowers, X, Y, and Z. Why me and my other roommate look him up and this guy had a domestic abuse case in Florida and he was wanted in Florida. Damn. Sitting in our living room. So yeah, we doing background checks. We we need to know everything. So you made a good guy. call the police? There was no reward for him? <laughs> <laughs> Because y'all get him locked up, he knows y'all got him locked up, Who and that's cares? what it is. If there's a reward for Who him, cares? He comes back when he gets out. Because yeah, most of the time in them in them DV situations, they don't be stay locked up for long. So then they, they would have came back and got hurt. Well, let's go to the phone lines. We got Brandy on the line. Brandy, good morning. Good morning. Hey, good morning. So we're asking, do you do background checks and research before dating somebody? Okay, so my thoughts on that is I'm married. I've been married for 20-some years, but I have a girlfriend that is newly divorced, and I am her P.I. I absolutely, she has started with some dating apps, things like that, and there's too much information out there available not to. You are out there by yourself, so absolutely, you should know who you are meeting and what 
they you guys have in common. So you can do register of deeds, you can do, there's too many social media sites not to be able to draw a good conclusion before you date somebody. I agree. I agree with you, Mama. She right. We got City on the line. City, good morning. What's up, man? We talking about background checks and research before you dating somebody. Yeah, well, okay. Who's doing the background check? The woman? Both you could can. too. Yeah, all you gotta do is go to their social media site, see what they've been tweeting, go on their Facebook, see what they're talking about. So is that the person's character? Is that actually a representation of the person? That's a good question, no, I too. Think, I don't think so fully. I think it's a start, though. Like, it can help you kind of. But for me, when I go to social media, I'm not even more so looking at, like, is this your character all the way? Because I still want to get to know you in person. I'm trying to make sure you don't have relationships you hide in. Like, that type of thing. Kids That's, you hide in. Yeah, so like... If that, person, if that person told you everything you need to know, and you can't judge if they're lying or not. I think that's your problem. Hey, it, wow. it, it depends it's on how it, wow. exactly. it depends on how far you are with the person because sometimes you'll meet a person and and be like get their number and be like hey let's meet up next week. Y'all might not even talk before that first meetup or let's meet this weekend. It I think, I think you, you just hit a trigger for Lauren. She just started. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not triggered. I'm not triggered at all. Now, I disagree with City though because people lie and you don't know people. You, you're starting to learn people and I think sometimes people will lie. They'll tell, they'll put their their best foot forward. And you really want to know what they're about. Like well, what he said, said is true, though. When you go to social media, is that really the representation? I don't I think it's like a full representation. Because if you mm -hmm. went to my social media, depending on the day, I, I don't know where I would sweat you. I, but if I you meet like me in person, it'd probably be different. Social media is really just like your best version of yourself. Like, I'm putting all my best on here. Mm -hmm. My best outfits, my best accomplishments. I don't think it's a real reflection of who the person is. Mm -mm. Mm. Well, that's Nala. She's joining us. Of course, she has passed the aux in a little bit, but 800... Oh, oh, also, too, I want to tell people, man, call up for Donkey today. I, I like the fact that we are opening up the phone so much today, mm -hmm. and it's Friday, so I want y'all to call in with your own Donkey of the Days. Or, or, or go to the talkback feature on the iHeartRadio app and send me your, send me your Donkey of the Days. 800-585-1051. We're asking, do you do research or background checks on somebody you're dating? Call us up now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Call, 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 call. Tell ya, tell ya. If y'all talking about it, you know we talking about it. It's Topic Time. Call 800-585-1051 to join into the discussion with The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Jess Hilarious. Y'all mean the guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Lola La Rosa's filling in for Jess. And Nala's with us this morning. So we're asking 800-585-1051. Do you do a background check and do research on your partner? Is that something you do? And we got a lot of people on the phone line. We got Dupree on the line. Dupree, good morning. Man, what's up? DJ Envy, Uncle Charlotte, and Lauren LaRosa. Peace, King. Good morning, Nyla here, too. Man, good morning. So I'm calling to answer the question of the day. You definitely got to do a background check on these females. I had an ex who was lying on social media talking about she a dental hygienist, and we still got the girl in school for a dental assistant. So I'm like, girl, why are you over here lying to the people? And then this other girl, she over here talking about she a PA, but then she come to find out she a CNA. So she she not a doctor assistant, she's a nurse assistant. So yeah, we definitely gotta do our background check, for sure. Well, at least she in the ballpark. Yeah, I mean, she you know what I'm yeah, saying? She, she is she in somebody's mouth. She's not a dentist, she's yeah. just a dentist she assistant. Is some, she in somebody's mouth. She's she in the mouth. She's she like, all over the mouth. I feel like she's manifesting. Yeah, yeah, she's manifesting. Yeah. She put it in the air. Hello, who's this? Hey, this is Nicole. How are you guys doing? Hey, Nicole, Hi, Nicole. Good morning. You sound so pleasant. Good morning. She's trying to highlight you, sound like it. But Nicole, oh my we're asking, do you do yes. background checks and research on people you're dating? Yes, I do. So, crazy story. Four years ago, I met this guy at a downtown bar, and he told me his name. We exchanged numbers, and I went on to the internet and just typed his name into Google. He came up as a registered sex offender. Jesus. Oh. That'll do it. <laughs> but I... <laughs> <laughs> But I didn't get that vibe from him. So I was like, this is a story. Wait, 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 wait. No, 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 what kind of vibe are, are you looking to get? He didn't have the registered sex offender vibe. What is the registered okay, sex okay. offender vibe, ma'am? <laughs> like creepy, right? Creepy. Like, you know, like he has a hidden background, some attention. But I didn't get that from him. He was very kind and sweet. Kind of, well, we could say that about Jeffrey Dahmer, right? I was about so to we'll say, see. most of them people be like that. Very charming. <laughs> well, what were you looking for? Like a van with no windows? Like what would, like, <laughs> what, what would be sex offender? <laughs> Yo, he pulled up. Did he come to the date on the van, in the van? <laughs> so listen, let, let me give y'all some more context. So I did hang out with him again. After, After you that, found out? out sis. You no, sis. No, so he brought it. <laughs> you crazy. He brought up himself. And he told me what happened. He was in the military. 
he had sex with some drunk girl and she, she had a fiance and she said she, she told her fiance that he raped her mm. but but it wasn't rape right and he was in the military so you know these girls out here be trying to get these military men cut up so anywho fast forward he is the father of my child and my our child is four years old <laughs> whoa Oh, the registered sex offender? This is too that much. Is wow. Oh, no, no, I understand you what you're saying. You got a YouTube so, channel? So you're saying that he, he, had to, he had to register as a sex offender, but it was for uh, uh, something he actually didn't do. He said, yeah, he said he didn't do it. Isn't Correct. sex offender underage? No. no. That could be rape. rape oh, could be well, I, I don't know. I don't know. You know but, what, though? Hold I mean, on. There, I think Nala might be right. No, I thought sex offender, well, sex offender, if you rape somebody. But if you have to register as a, hold on, let me. Oh, yeah, no, let's look it up now. Let's do research, yeah. Does he have a mustache, man? I did not expect this story to have a happy ending. <laughs> <don't be> <laughs> he doesn't have a mustache. He doesn't have a mustache, and he well, has a white van. Uh, that... Congratulations. Or should I say congratulations? <laughs> oh, you are required to register as sex offenders to keep law enforcement informed about their whereabouts to prevent them from committing additional sex crimes. The purpose of sex offender registry. Uh, so this happens when it can just be rape, sexual assault, statutory yeah. rape, child molestation. It's, oh, it's not just Just underage. kids, yeah. Okay. Well, wow. it worked out for you, man. No, because he's the worst baby father ever. Worst decision Whoa, of my life. Girl, I'm girl, girl. Man. I'm so confused. You had the signs. You so had the signs. Okay. Okay. I, 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 Not you had the signs. <laughs> it's just kind of crazy. Yeah. That wasn't even right. a red flag. He threw a red blinky. Have a great day. <laughs> All right. All right. Bye. Wow. I, I Lord just, have mercy. I just don't understand anything in life no more. I got to pray after that one. Yeah. <laughs> Something got on me. Lord so Jamie Ann in the, in, on Instagram, she said, I read, she's in our uh, live on Instagram. She said, I read the full court documents. Mm. This other guy said, Instagram is just enough for me. So yeah, guys, do be checking. I didn't know guys check social media though. Like I thought that they look, but I know they deep dive. I'm sure they deep dive. Y'all, just like you deep dive Yeah but I feel like Men be acting so cool Like none of that stuff And especially you You talk about some of the men That you be talking to So they gotta make seem If you really talking to a guy If you really dating If you a player player Like that. You know what I, was, I, I have an issue with dating uh, If I'm dating Why would I not be talking to Like I can talk to more than one person Like why does that make Why is that a bad thing Men I, make that such a bad thing I'm not dating I don't know But if somebody's dating you And they want to get You know close to you And you got six seven guys They might look at you as a six, player That you don't take a lot crazy That's a right, lot two, of three. people But if I like you And you become a priority Why are you worried about the other two Or just the other case, one You might be a player You might just be trying to get A little something for everybody see, that, I gotta see what your background is I gotta see what your horoscope is But as a woman We're supposed to be okay with Like if we're just dating We're just dating Because men are quick to be like I'm not your boyfriend that's good. He letting you know what it is off top. But I can't have a boundary and let you know that yeah. I'm dating other people. I and think you there's just nothing wrong with it. I think you don't got to say it though. Yeah, yeah, Sometimes tell no, nobody you a hoe. She going to jail this weekend. Nobody will tell him you a hoe. I don't even say it. I just get put in these predicaments where I'm being treated like I'm a horrible person because I'm not like with like one like just with this you one. You know, you're telling them you a hoe. No, because she talk, she gets on the air and talks about three like, guys. She talked to a Delaware State last week. Even before I was here, it always people always just assume. I deal with a lot of people and they be like it's such it's, it's hard to compete Lauren, with Lauren always act like you 1D rest in peace to Liam okay? period always act like you 1D period okay like you what I'm look at me I'm an all white over here I am a wife 1D 1D one man one person oh. one direction Jesus Christ mm -hmm. you, young study and I, am I, you don't know what D is anymore <laughs> my, <laughs> my 1D baby you my everything he just called you the right. young stud in the making young stud yeah. <laughs> Young stud. What that's gonna dick? that's gonna stick with you now, like no, no, young no. stud. Why is that? Young stud like young stud like. <laughs> All right, Yo, we got just minor stud with is crazy. Rosa coming up. What are we talking about? Oh, I'm sorry, minor stud threw me off. Um, there are some updates in the Big Meech case as well. Not the case, but Big Meech's uh, release as well. They've released some of his conditions of his. 2020, 16. 2026. 20, release. 2026. All right, we'll get to that next. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Sign in your head. Why, why you laugh every time this record comes It's a fantastic record. I don't ever want it to die. <laughs> okay? All right, we're going to keep this record. We're going to keep this record high until February uh, at the Super Bowl. He only going to do a little bit of it at the Super Bowl, though. <sighs> morning, everybody. We are the Breakfast Club. Let's get to Jess with the mess with Lauren LaRosa. No, it ain't time oh, for that. It's a reset break. Oh, oh, also, oh. what I want to tell y'all, too, uh, Donkey today is four after the hour. Um, I got something I want to say for Donkey today, but I'd rather y'all call in. I want to take some calls. Whoever y'all feel like uh, should get Donkey today, today, we can do that. And go to our talkback feature. You know, you can go to uh, go to the uh, iHeartRadio app, go to Breakfast Club Podcast, uh, click on the microphone, and go to the talkback feature and send in um, your... your your donkeys of the day on talkback. 
Okay. Yes. So people could call up right now, and if you want to give somebody donkey today, Charlamagne yes. is going to allow you the opportunity to give donkey today yeah. today. Are you I, giving somebody donkey as well? Well, I, yes, I am, but I have a, it's a call to action more so than a donkey because there's a tragedy that happened in uh, Greensboro that I want that I want to talk about. So mm-hmm. I'm, I, after I do that, I'm gonna have like three or four people, you know, do their own donkeys. Okay. So call us right now. All right. And yeah. I'll, I'll go to the talk back feature. On the iHeartRadio app. Explain how to do it one more time. You go to the iHeartRadio app. Mm -hmm. uh, You go to the Breakfast Club uh, podcast. Right. Right? Uh, Well, yeah, go to the iHeartRadio app. Search for the Breakfast Club podcast. Tap the mic. Record your question. Hit send. And you can participate in Donkey. And we'll get it. That's right. All right. Now, we got uh, Jess with the Mess uh, coming up in a little bit. We do. Oh, you want to know what we're talking about? Yeah. Well, let's call it tease, Lauren. Yes, that's how it works. All right. Well, we're talking about... uh, Because we... mm. We're talking about Big Meech. We got some updates. We're okay. going to get into the conditions. Remember, I told you guys it was going to be released, but on conditions. You know what's going on over there? She's taking text messages and emails about homecoming this weekend <laughs> and all her little booze hitting her up. Like, yo, you want me to meet you in North Carolina? That's what's happening over there. Actually, that's what's happening actually, over there. Actually, the journalist in me is reading something from uh, sure. today's website sure. to prepare for Just With The Mess sure. because I like for Just This segment to be very thorough. Sure. But since you're thoroughly in my business, mm-hmm. I'm going to thoroughly enjoy you getting out of it. Thank you. <laughs> Just With The Mess is coming mm. up. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. All right, morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlamagne the guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Now let's get to Jess with the mess with Lola Rosa. The news is real. Weather is real. Hilarious, Jessica Robin Moore. Jess, don't do no lies. Don't do no lies. She don't spare nobody. She don't spare nobody. Worldwide, Jess. Worldwide, mess. On the Breakfast Club. She's a coach of shoes with Lauren, Lauren La Rosa. I'm back. And I got the mess. Talk, talk to me. So we discussed that Big Meech was moved to a halfway house mm-hmm. and that he will be under government supervision until January 2026. Mm-hmm. Now, in new legal docs that were reported by TMZ, they are talking about what the conditions of his release will be. Remember I told you when I first reached out on the story, a source told me like, yes, he is free. Mm-hmm. However, there are conditions. So his conditions include um, him having to participate in a substance abuse program, okay. which may include drug and alcohol testing. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, of course, living in the halfway house that he lives in, of course, there'll be different things where like, I'm sure there's not the full details here. Cause again, I told you that they're not releasing everything and putting everything in documents because of his safety and security. But normally those halfway houses have rules and stipulations around like visitation when you can leave, if you can even Curfew, leave, yep. curfews, things of that nature. But specifically in the documents, they talk about the fact that um, he'll be supervised. The supervised release will be for five years and it'll include that substance abuse program, um, drug and alcohol testing. So mm-hmm. we know a little bit more about what his life uh, will begin to look like. Now, moving on Gabrielle Union. Gabrielle Union uh, got on TikTok and she shared a love letter to women in their 30s that I definitely think women in their 30s need to hear because the haters that be, the hate envy, you know it be haters that be. Mm -hmm. When you're a woman in your 30s and you're thriving and you're figuring out life. So you accepted this. But that there's haters to be? (laughs) No, the message. Oh yeah, like, I, the, the, mess- happened, the, the, the message. When we hear the message, I, I want to say I wasn't. I, What's it the sat, it's, we gonna take a listen. It sat well with me because this stuff I already knew. So the haters that be, the other woman in the room, just say his name. He, oh, he identifies as him. Yes, Charlene. So now take you, a listen. So, so now you're hating on the trans community. I'm hating on you. I don't think they accept you either. I'm hating on you. <laughs> Let's take a listen to Gabrielle Union and her love letter to the woman in the 30s. I, I picked this for you. To my girlies in their 30s. Time isn't running out. It's not. Feels like it is. If you look at social media, oh my God, you're running out of time. It's not. It's not. Other people will make you feel like you're running out of time because they want everyone to do what they're doing so they feel better about their choices. There's no race. Like, there's no checkered flag at the end of life where they're like, she did it all. Extra stars for when you're dead. Your 30s, travel. Travel. Tell people how you really feel. Don't lie to your therapist. And be okay to not be okay. And be okay with missing out because staying in is more fun. Mm. And I want to mention, too, that Gabrielle Union met uh, Dwayne Wade, her husband, when she was in her 30s. The couple then welcomed their daughter (coughs) um, via surrogate in November 2018 (coughs) when she was 46 years old. You want to say something? (laughs) I got my hand raised. Uh, Go ahead. (laughs) Yes, sir. Your honor. Go ahead. I object. Bye. Okay. Uh, there is a lot of what Gabrielle Union said that I agree with. Uh, I think she said, "Don't lie to your therapist." Mm-hmm. I agree with that. Don't don't fear missing out. I agree with that. But I disagree with her when she starts talking about clocks in time. 
Okay, I agree that everyone is moving on their own time, but everyone's clock is different. There is an invisible clock ticking right now for all of us that none of us can see. So some of us have less time than others. So don't wait. Sometimes later becomes never. Do it now. Gabrielle Union has no idea how much time you have left. Neither do you. Mm. You done with your time? Yes. Okay, great. Well, I thought it was a great message because I do mm-hmm. I do know that, you know, there are pressures that come from the room. But I will say all the stuff that she was saying, like, I I, I was like, oh, yeah, I already felt like this. I wonder why I'm, she wrote I'm that doing... message because, Gary, you know, Gary Union, what well, she's like 51. So she's not in her 30s. I wonder why she said, you know, I want to speak to the, those young individuals. It, was it her because group I'm, chat? Was it her, her younger sister, her I'm younger sure girls? She, I just wonder why. I'm sure she remembers just, you know, being in her 30s and she was trying to figure it all out. She didn't get married until she got in her 30s. She didn't have a kid, even mm-hmm. though it was by surrogate, until she was 46. So She's so, one of the blessed ones. Yeah, she's one of the blessed ones that made sure. it to 50 plus years Yeah, old. she's one to give some hope. Some but, of y'all going to die in your 30s. Jesus. Therefore, you have an invisible clock ticking right now that none of us can see. So you just don't know how much time you have left. Do you ever have any hope or optimism for people? (laughs) I do. But I'm also a realistic person. And what I said was realistic just now. And you know it. Yeah, but like, (laughs) no hope, no optimism. I I didn't say that. None. Not not one. Like, dang. Well, there's an invisible clock ticking for all of us, including me. None of us know how much time we have left. So what advice would you give? Lauren LaRose in her thirties. Sometimes Child, he, later he, becomes never. Charlemagne, do it now. Charlemagne wants me to meet somebody tomorrow, become barefoot, pregnant, and no, I want you to wear shoes. <laughs> and, I, would never, I would never and, want you walking around here barefoot. <laughs> and mind y'all, it's like yes, I'm going to. All this is going to happen for me. It's going to happen there you soon. Go. But is it Charlemagne or However, is it your mother? Because your mother also said she wants you to yes, speed every, it up a little every, bit. I think people, so my, my everybody has different reasons. My mom wants me to experience having a kid because she saw how wonderful it was to have her kid step in when she went through life situations and mm-hmm. she was sick, right? right? My grandmother wants me to have a kid because my grandmom's getting old. She's going to get up out of here. She want to meet my kids. She's going to get up Charlamagne out of here. Charlamagne wants so me crazy. to have a kid because, your grandma's realistic. Your grandma, yeah, realistic. Your, your grandma know that clock is ticking. Like, Charlamagne oh. wants me to meet a man just mm-hmm. so I can bring him in here and he can tear my relationship to shreds. <laughs> you be a fool well, if you bring a, your man well, here. Well, well, I'm well, not. Well, well, okay. well, I, I am not. Well, you're not the number one person that I'm looking to tear apart their relationship. Leave Taylor alone. <laughs> that man takes her on picnics. He's a good man. Oh, I can't That's wait. That's a good to meet man, Savannah. Well, I really just want to warn him. You gonna meet him? Oh, I can't wait. Next Why week? Would- <laughs> nah, I can't wait. I almost called him the other day at the airport. Really? Oh, almost, my almost, gosh. Almost, almost, no. Almost. Mm-mm. She ducked off. She got out there. She knew I was coming. She got out of Dodge. I've been waiting right with her. Whatever term. <laughs> when he coming to pick us up? That would have been me. Mm-hmm. You are so <laughs> annoying. My optimism hope you choked on that water. <laughs> Not die, but just choke a little bit. A little bit. Just a little bit. Oh, just a little bit. Like, yeah, can't always get what you want. Just faint a little bit, but just not die. Sometimes things turn into never. Okay. That's right. <laughs> Sometimes later becomes never. Do it now. It's going to happen for there us. You we go. are all there blessed. We, are, right. we, know it's, right. we know it's coming. We're going to be well there manicured and prepared when it does. There you go. I just heard my friends know. Please let my outfit be good and my nails be great. That's it. When that happens. Be ready. That's right. Stay ready. That's right. Mm-hmm. I'm rooting for you. Envy. Yes. Don't look so optimistic. <laughs> oh, I just made sure the eyelashes don't are good. So, your yeah, eyelashes don't is look good. So you good money. Yeah. Y'all, 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 now you're asking for too much. <laughs> <laughs> See, I didn't even bring, bring that up. Yo, I but, promise you when I had my wedding, you are not allowed anywhere near a microphone whatsoever. I Honestly. can't wait. <laughs> Envy, <laughs> you probably can't even DJ because you're going to have a mic and you would Wait. let him come. Let me host re- we host, no. I'll host the reception and no, DJ. No, we got to go. We got to get out of here. You will, not, <laughs> you will not turn my wedding to a love and hip hop reunion. We got to go. He'll walk in with the exes. Uh-uh. Got to go. Behind door See, number two. See ya. I'm going I'm to I'm reinforce what the pastor says when the pastor says, anybody want to stand up? And uh, what did they say? Anybody want to speak now? Hold your peace. For, uh, forever hold your peace. Yes, I'm gonna say he said. <laughs> anybody object to this? Speak now. Hold Jesus your peace. Jesus Christ! <laughs> I feel bad for you. <laughs> Have fun this week in North Carolina, <laughs> Auntie. All I'm right, with the host. Donkey of the day is up next. What are we doing? Uh, for after the hour, I have a call to action. I want to say rest in peace to the family of Tyreek uh, Burton, but also uh, we have your donkey of the day. So everybody that hit us up on the talkback feature that That's wants right. to call in, uh, now's your time to shine. That's right. And you can get on the phone lines as well, 800-585-1051. We'll do it when we come back. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. You're checking out The Breakfast Club. <laughs> Big ass Some donkey today just saw themselves. I've been watching Charlamagne. I was ready for it. <laughs> I never heard of a donkey the other day. What is it? I'm a donkey. Say it again, Charlamagne. I'm a donkey. Yes, you are a donkey. Show you how to act a donkey.
everything that Charlamagne <laughs> said is true. Yeah, it's dark here today for Friday, October 18th. is more of a uh, call to action. Uh, a couple of calls to action. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to say R.I.P. to Ty Tyreek Burton. Tyreek was 37 years old, and he was fatally shot outside his own wedding, wedding reception. And law enforcement has not caught the individual yet that I know of, but we need to get this man off the street. Mm -hmm. uh, let's go to, what's the new, what, what is the new Fox 8. Fox 8. Let's go to Fox 8 for the report, please. Days after what should have been a joyful celebration, friends and family gathered to mourn 37-year-old Tyreek Burton, who was killed outside his own wedding reception. Witnesses say the shooting happened as Tyreek and his wife were preparing to leave the venue. Tyreek had briefly left to retrieve something, and when he returned, family members say he was followed by a man who accused Burton of cutting him off. Mm -hmm. Moments mm -hmm. later, the man opened fire, killing Tyreek in front of his new wife. Mm -hmm. As they grieve, family and friends are looking for justice and longing for answers about the senseless act that stole Tyreek from them. See something, say something. It's real simple. Greensboro Guilford Crime Stoppers is offering a reward for any information that leads to arrest in this case. They're asking that you call Contact them at 336-373-1000. In Greensboro, Elijah Skipper, Fox 8 News. Yeah, there's absolutely positively no reason to kill somebody because they cut you off. This brother was at his own wedding reception, left the venue for a second with his new wife. Man accuses him of cutting him off the road. The brother Tyreek apologized. He literally said after being questioned by the suspect, you know, the suspect said, who was in the car? Who just passed me at the stop sign? Tyreek said, if I did, I'm sorry. Then the man opened fire, killing him in front of his new wife. I want him locked up. Greensboro, I don't know who the person is, uh, but rightfully so, the Burton family is pleading with the public to come forward with any information. Mm -hmm. That human needs to get off your streets, Greensboro. When you see something, you should say something because a person like that would absolutely kill you or someone you love in cold blood, just like they did Tyreek Burton. Turn this man in. Turning this man in is not snitching. It's crime prevention. Hell, I wouldn't care if it's labeled snitching. This man has to go. That's we right. all seen the Spider-Man movies, okay? Don't be like Peter Parker. Remember when Peter Parker was mad at the wrestling promoter because the wrestling promoter didn't pay him all his money so when the wrestling promoter got robbed peter parker could have stopped the robber but he didn't because he was mad and felt like the wrestling promoter deserved it but then that same robber ended up killing his uncle ben moments later that could be you all right if you have information that could lead to arresting the murderer of tyreek burton um and don't say anything once again that man is in your community after killing an innocent man mm -hmm. At his, at, 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 just because he left from he left from his wedding reception for just a second. All right, I want him in handcuffs before the weekend is over. So if you have any information that might help identify the suspect, reach out and touch Greensboro Guilford Crime Stoppers. They are offering a reward for any information leading to his arrest. Okay, anyone with information, Charlemagne the God, myself, I am urging you to call Crime Stoppers 336-373-1000. Rest in peace to Tyreek Burton. Sending healing energy to the Burton family. Uh, let's get the person who murdered him off the street. Yeah, they, was, they were saying that there's ring cameras all up and down that block. Well, we need that guy off the street. Okay, in the meantime, give that suspect who killed Tyreek Burton the biggest hee-haw. Uh -huh. Now, I promised you all that I was going to also give you the opportunity to do your own donkeys. That was the other call to action. So we have the hotline, 1-800-585-1051. Can we go to one of those those calls, Red? What up? This Eddie Kane, man. Oh, no, Rock on. Island, Illinois. That's so talk I'm back. I, that, that, I, We're going to get to the talk back in a second. Let's go to the calls, though. Hello, who's this? Who you want to give donkey to, bro? What up, yo? This is Damien from Detroit. Who you want to give donkey to, Damien? First of all, Starlemane and Envy. Both of y'all get done here today. What happened? For what? The common, everyday abuse of Lauren LaRosa. Baby. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, what's what your you name again? Where are you from? What up, though? You from abusing? Detroit? What do you mean? He from the place you don't know nothing about. The D. Uh, leave, leave that woman alone. Look, let, let life be life. Period. Yeah, life you know what I'm saying? Be. Like, let, let her find a man on her own. I just want people and to I know. Want, I would never introduce y'all to anybody because y'all are horrible. Exactly. <laughs> and I just want people to know they make it up here like I'm struggling and battling against the world trying to find the men. The men are there. I'm just making sure I'm going to have the right one. Y'all want me to rush into something. I don't want you to rush into nothing, okay? I don't see this as something the and nothing abuse. that you're talking about. Did you about. hear that, man? I love it when men can call out other men about things. All right, well, let's let's go to uh, abuse. Let's go to another person. Hello? Yeah, I, I actually want to go to Talkback, right? Let's go to the Talkback app uh, for everybody who went to the iHeartRadio app. Search Breakfast Club Podcast. Yep. Tap the mic. Recorded their, uh, their, their donkey. I want to go to that. Let's hear it. What up? This is Eddie Kane, man, from Rock Island, Illinois. I'm a custodian at a college out here. Uh, I just want to get a donkey a day to the students that like the uh, white boogers on the wall, Ew. spit snot on the stall door, oh. you know what I'm talking about? 
I gotta clean that shit up. This is fucking horrible. I just hate disgusting Damn. kids. What school you know is what I'm that? talking about? Love the Breakfast Club. Y'all stay up. That wasn't no elementary school he was no, talking about. No, that didn't sound like it. How old are they? I thought it was in high school. Or college or something. That's disgusting. Ew. Okay, let's go to another talk back of. Don't get it. Day goes to Donald J. Trump, man. For disrespecting all my Haitian Americans out there. I'm first generations. My mother and father, we don't eat dogs or cats. Uh, but uh, if I could feed you one, I surely would, man. And shout out to uh, Kamala Harris, man. We looking forward for you uh, whooping this white boy tail in the election. Yeah, I, salute I, to all the Haitians. I, 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 I agree with him, but you know, if, if, if you're being accused of eating them, you shouldn't <laughs> feed them to nobody <laughs> either. It's the same same difference, my brother. Is this, you know what I mean? Thank you. Oh, okay, let's take one more. Let's go to another talk back. What we got? I want to give my donkey of today to all the black folks out here who are considering voting for Trump or voting for any Republican, knowing that since 2020 alone, there have been hundreds, hundreds of laws passed to suppress our vote. It makes no sense that anyone would vote Republican when they're actively trying to disenfranchise us, trying to make sure that we cannot vote by doing things like gerrymandering, closing polling centers. Uh -huh. okay. So it's only 30 seconds, right? We yes. got one more? We got any more? Yeah, one more. We okay, let's take, we'll take one, one more. more. Let's one more. This is the talkback feature that we, uh, we use. Let's see it. Let's hear Donkey it. Donkey of the day should go to all those idiots that can't say Kamala Harris and they keep getting her name wrong. How stupid are you or what? Kamala! Uh -huh. All right. Uh -huh. Okay. So listen, uh, open your iHeartRadio app, search Breakfast Club Podcast, tap the mic, uh, and you can always send us anything you want. You can, If we solicit for Donkey today, you can send us that. If you know you just got commentary about topics that we're discussing on Breakfast Club, you can you can do that as well. That's right. Well, that was Donkey today. Thank you, Charlemagne. Mm -hmm. Now, when we come back, it's Friday, so you know what that means. It's, it's Freaky, Freaky, Freaky Friday! Oh, the music was late. 800 585 1051. We're asking when you're in a relationship and somebody wants to get freaky too fast, is that a red flag? In a relationship or before the relationship? Well, you know, when you're talking. Who Me in the room talking? came up with this topic? Lauren and Mac. Lauren? Well, what yeah, you what's T? What's up? You all right? No, I was asking. Okay. Oh, because she, no. she's not in a relationship? I didn't say that. I said before or, <laughs> I'm, or I'm, in a relationship. The, the brother told us to lay off her. I'm not. <laughs> yeah. See, I ain't, I ain't say that. No, don't, that was him. Don't, don't look at me. Hey, you said you know that. What, I you, know what, you know what I want you to do, Unc? I want you to always, at your age, you know, you ain't going to be here. Your age. I'm going to be here to 101. <laughs> You're going to be here that long. I'm going to say it out loud. I'm going to be here to 101. S speak how you feel. Okay. We, we want to hear. You at the age where you earned that right. What yes. you want to say right now? Nothing. Okay. I was. What I was going to say was, before the relationship, Freaky Too Fast is a turn off. So what is, what is Freaky Too Fast? Is sending pictures fast? Sending, sending pictures. You don't know especially why you un, Especially unsolicited. You did say that. Say it with your chest. <laughs> so you go to the gym every day to try to develop that chest into something. It ain't got there yet, but so say it with that chest. Oh, I'm All listening. Right? You see how my eyes is? That means I'm listening. 800-585-1051. Is being too freaky, too fast a turn off when you're dating? Let's discuss. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. It's Freaky Friday, guys. Hey, look, where are my freaks at? Call in now. 800-585-1051. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Jess Hilarious. Charlamagne the guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Lauren LaRosa is filling in for Jess. It's Friday, so you know what that means. It's Freaky, Freaky, Freaky Friday. And the Freaky, Freaky, Freaky Friday question comes from Lauren LaRosa and our friend Mac. And asking, is too freaky too fast a turn off? So let's yes, start with you. A hundred percent. So what is too freaky too fast for too you? Too freaky too fast is like if we say for instance we just exchange numbers and you like I unsolicited photos of like your private areas. So so what, what, let's um, say let's say it's the first date. And after the first date, the guy says, Send me a picture of you. Is that too freaky too fast? Send me a picture of you, of me. Like what do you mean by a picture? Like he wants like a nude photo? I'm sure I mean he could see regular pictures on your IG. Yeah, I mean, why you want it? It depends. Like, what was the date? Like, what was we giving on the date? First of all, this sounds like an amazing porno. I would love to create this for Tubi. I can see it too now. Too freaky, too fast. Too fast, too freaky. <laughs> too fast, too freaky. <laughs> too fast, too freaky. What's Tyrese? Tyrese in it? Oh, too God. fast. I mean, just because. With the red hat? And well, nothing was Tyrese else? and Ludacris because it's trash and shirts. Sure, you know what I'm saying? Too, too fast, fast, too freaky. You said it was a porn. 
Yeah, but yeah, it's I, mean, a play I don't want words. them in the poem, but they can be in it. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Just to you know, add to the whole title. I thought they're seeing Tyrese with no clothes. No, just I want him. I don't want him to participate okay. in the poem. <laughs> okay. I just want him to like be in the movie. Maybe play well, like the pastor that's trying to pray the freakiness out of a person. Because it'd be too fast. Yes. Well, I would say also too fast. I mean, well, and to answer your question, I think it depends on how comfortable the date was. It, there's a lot of variables. Like, this is not like a black and white thing. It's very, okay. it depends on the situation, how how you feel about the person or whatever. But like, it'd be people that you don't even know, literally just exchange phone numbers with mm -hmm. and date on some like, it, it's, it'd be a lot. Okay. All right, well, let's go to the phone lines. Ah, damn it. What's up, lovey? Oh, God. Yeah, it's Freaky Friday. <laughs> lovey was on my TikTok live talking crazy. All right, so if you don't know who lovey is, explain to the people who lovey is. Mr. A long time Inches. listener. Long time listener for the Bronx. For the Bronx. Long time listener with a 13 inch penis. <laughs> talk that talk, yes. Charlemagne. So, love you. <laughs> and it's freaky. Half, only the half out. It, oh, he's to take the half out. It's freak. I know freaky's Ouch. not a, a problem or a concern with you in a relationship. No, no. Respectfully, if I don't get it on the first date, there will not be a second date. Dang. What? How old are you? You, are, you heard that, Lauren? That's corny. <laughs> <laughs> That's corny. Th th thank you, lovey. Hello, who's this? But you didn't ask him why. I, I, but Lovey's also a little bit older. Hello? Yeah, that, that's true. That actually makes it worse. Hey, yo, what's up, man? What's up, Lewis? Now, it says that uh, you freaky right away. Yeah, and back in the day, I married now, man. Happily married, got kids. Blessed, 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 man. Uh, but yeah, back in the day when I was in, like, in high school, man. Oh, man, I used to be sending those pictures, man. Now that I look back and I'm like, what was I doing? No one wanted to see that. Oh, embarrassing, man. What would the girls... I mean, high school is a very... It's a, you know, you young and a little dumb, but what were the women responding to you when you were sending it? Because it, it was unsolicited, like they didn't want them photos? Uh, I mean, we were, like, on the topic, but I feel like I jumped the gun a little too fast sometimes. And it, you, day, you felt so weird yeah, about it, right? Yeah, I think, like... I feel weird, like, especially now. I feel super weird about it now, so I'm like, damn, shouldn't have done that. Man, and you know, the, the interesting thing about relationships, right? Like, men and women know why they're going out with each other, I I, I would assume. For sure. But I think men have uh, different goals than women do. A man wants to hit. A woman might actually be looking for... Yeah. It depends on the person. That's a good thing, though. It, it depends, depends, depends on the person. I think there are women that, like, even if you are looking for a boo, you can... you. The minute you meet somebody, you know, like, okay, yeah, I know where this is going. And you know when it's going to go. Hey, there. guys, can I, can I say something real quick? Sure. All right, man, I've been calling all day because I've been trying to get through. One thing is, uh, I was trying to get Donkey of the Day. I, I give it to the people who think that Trump did good, uh, brought policies down because it wasn't that. It was a pandemic. Uh, no one was using gas because no one was driving, so gas was cheap. Uh, no one was really buying stuff, so supply and demand, so everything was cheap. So people need to understand that, like, Trump didn't do anything. It was a pandemic that happened that made everything cheap. It's a okay. good point. Thank you. And also, and then one one last thing real quick. And also, trouble in the God, boy, you're not, you don't look like first uh, chestnut. You look like his left nut, man. That's facts. Thank you. Thank you, Lewis. <laughs> no, no, that's right, facts. Yeah. facts. He, he, been, he wrote that down he a long time it. ago. He did. He, he wrapped for that one. He, I mean, he slapped his knee when he said and that he, one. He, and we still, when he shot the gun, it still jerked back and <laughs> fell out his hand. I, I thought it was kind of funny. All right. Hello, who's this? TJ from Orlando. Now, TJ, now, the only reason I went to you is because you said that you think Lauren, you, you says you're blind and you think Lauren is fine. <laughs> Pretty much. Okay. <laughs> Not me coming through the vision and they there. I type, and I don't even know what she looked like, and I'm just like, damn. You like my voice? Uh, you're seeing it, you, uh, is it the voice? It's like this way, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm an old school cat, so it's like, damn, like, it is what it is. Ooh. I know that's right. You got the blind men hollering. Mm. They, blushing they, they blushing the, because a blind man says you're fine. <laughs> a different level of man. They see the vision even when they can't see the vision. Period. 800 is Freaky, freaky, freaky Friday. And the freaky, freaky, freaky Friday question is, is being too freaky, too fast a turn off? Let's discuss this. The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Freaky Friday. Man, it's Freaky Friday. It's Freaky. Call in now. 800-585-1051 We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club Morning everybody It's DJ NV Jess Hilarious Charlemagne the guy We are The Breakfast Club Lauren LaRosa's filling in for Jess It's Friday so you know what that means It's Freaky Freaky Freaky, freaky, freaky Friday and The Freaky 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 Friday question is 
we're asking is too freaky, too fast a turn off? And, you know, we uh, open up the phone lines, but also open up the mic. Yeah, well, not the mic. You can go to Talk Back. You know, go to uh, the iHeartRadio app, search for the Breakfast Club podcast, tap the mic, uh, record your, 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 your question or your statement, whatever it is. Hit sin, and your voice will be heard. All right, well, let's go to the Talk Back now. Hello? Well, let's, let's see some of the people. I call y'all and I can't never get through. So to the answer to the question, yes, if somebody wants to get freaky too fast, it's a red flag. I go overboard. I be like, nah, they trying to give me AIDS. I don't know. God to freaky it. too fast. What? They're trying to give it to me. So yeah, red flag. <laughs> somebody threw the red blanket on that. Damn, she said they're trying to give me AIDS. My God. <laughs> we got Eddie on the line. Eddie, good morning. Good morning, man. What's going on? How y'all doing? What's up, Eddie? We asking, is too freaky too fast a turn off? Nah, I don't think it's a turn off, but I think it goes both ways, though. I think it's different for the guys and for the females. I feel like with the guys, y'all know how guys are. Guys just going to go head first and do what they do. But with a female, I feel like it's a little weird because, you know, females don't usually jump off the ledge like that immediately. That's true. I, I just said. I just said that. I said men and women have different uh, intentions. Now nah, you're right. Yep. Exactly. You know, a guy would just, you know, a guy would just hit your phone the craziest picture out of nowhere and just deal with whatever comes with it. But a female, it's like that's not usual for a female. So if a female jumps out the gate like that, uh, you know, that's a little funny. Is it only funny when it's a female that like you're not interested in seriously? Because if it's just somebody you trying to hit, you don't, it's not you don't care, right? You still gonna go forward with it. I would say I don't care because you know I'm trying to hit them, but it's still like like you know like what's going on for real? Why are you why are you jumping off the ledge like that so quick? Got you. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But well, thank you, brother. Hello, who's this? Quayana. Quayana. Good morning. Do you think being too freaky too fast is a turn off? It can be. It depends. So it depends on the setting. Now, if it's something to where we just met and that's the type of time that you're coming off on, yes, you're a creep. Now, if we've been kicking it for a little bit and we both exchanging those mutual feelings, then maybe not. But if it's not mutual, then yes, you're a creep. Okay. I wonder, do women take it personal when a guy is too freaky, too fast? Like, does the woman say, like, who do you think I am that you can... You know, move on me like that Because reality is It's just him It's the guy's problem Not not right. yours So what's the freakiest A guy has got with you, Lauren? I got pictures on, That I didn't want to receive And I was so confused Really? First yeah. date? Not even a date Like, it just exchanged numbers And like, I, it was I was like, whoa And I like blocked It, it was like, weird mm -hmm. And it was from an older guy too So I kind of felt like You old enough to know that Like, you gotta read the room a little bit Like, mm -hmm. at least Like, dang You wanna ask me my favorite color first? I mean, not that Jesus. I care about yours, but they be air dropping penis pics nowadays, right? Yo, you ever been on the airplane and somebody tried to air drop you something? Mm -hmm. I decline it I decline. all the time because I, I see, be thinking. I, I'm, yep. As soon as I see something, I, I decline. I always think that, yes. But yeah. They I, caught me one time. They caught you, you accepted it, and what was it? It was the it was a penis, penis pic, you still right got on it. The plane. No, I don't have it no more. You got to save it right got, now. You phone. got me right on the plane. It was a it was an airdrop. I don't know what I thought it was. I clicked it. Bam! Caught me right then, and then the person next to me—I don't have no, you know, screen protector on my, you know, the dark Whoa, screen. So it's see, so look, yeah. Is that where that dildo rumor came from? Probably. Oh my God. <laughs> no, you're right, Lauren. Probably. You're right. All the gay rumors from him come from right. something gay that he actually All did. All right. <laughs> Do we have a moral okay. of the story, guys? Moral of the story is just read the room. I would say. All right. Now, when we come back, we have Pastor Ox. Nyla will be back here, so we're gonna kick it with Nyla some more. So don't go anywhere. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlamagne Tha God. We are the Breakfast Club. Laura LaRosa filling in for Jess, and it's time for Pass the Ox. Go, 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 I'm good. How are you guys? Good, good, good. Plus, Big Nyla. All right. Thank you. What's up? What's up? I'm a little tired. I started doing a ladies night Thursdays at Saint. Okay. It's a vibe. If you guys are in the city, definitely check it out. How was it? It was lit. Blast was in there. Queen Nigel was in there. People I went to college with. So. Did uh, you rock out though? Yeah, it's R&B. Okay. It's easy. Okay, okay. It's, it's easy. Speaking of R&B, Ari Lennox is back with a new record. I'm so happy about it, and it's called Smoke. That's crazy. <laughs> Drop on the clues, Bob, for Ari Lennox. That was nuts. That was fire. Yeah, you're really an Ari Lennox fan. No. Like, you're really a that was butter, dope. baby. Ari needs Ari. new everything. New what? Mm -hmm. She needs a new, I don't know, management. New I thought she team, got rid of the team and got a new team. New label. Again 
He just wants to throw J. Cole She's still talking to J. Cole? What's this got to do with she, J. Cole? But then she, she, I thought she'd been distanced herself from them. No, I don't think so. I'm not I thought she just left the tour or something like Look, that. I'm I don't sure. know any it's of the tea. All I know is Ari I like got his everything. Record. Ari checks off every box that an artist could check off. She's dope. She always delivers with the music. So at some point, uh, everybody else around her needs to get on her level. That's how I feel. Well, I don't know. She's been through a few teams, so I think she's trying to figure it out. Hopefully, she's uh, figuring it out. I don't know out. if it actually happened, but she was asking to be dropped for oh, Dreamville. Yeah? yeah, back in January 2022. Ari's dope, though. So uh, next, we have Wizkid. <laughs> Wizkid and Brent Fias oh, did a sorry. record. I love Brent and I love Wizkid, so I was super excited to see this. It's called Peace of My Heart. That's dope. You two for two today, Nyla. It's cute. It's cute. Okay, okay. Yes, shout out to Brent. Shout out to the whole DMV. And then last but not least, we're going to get into Absol's new record. It's called All That. Drop one of Clues Bombs for Absol. Let me tell you something, Nyla. Those three songs you picked with Stella, and you know what all three of those individuals have in common? Talent! Okay? <laughs> There's a lack of it in this business, and that's why these songs be terrible. I don't want to count. I'm tired of your vibes. Okay? <laughs> you I'm so sick vibes. of you Negroes and your vibes. Okay? <laughs> I want you Negroes with your talent. All those three individuals you had, you played, have God-gifted talent. There is a difference. Just because you can go in the studio and record doesn't mean you should. <laughs> go in there when God tells you to. Mm. Okay? What did you hear? Because she, she comes with talent every week. No, sometimes it's just vibes. It ain't her fault. Oh. She knows. Just the, just hey, I got to play the best of what, what, I'm, what, what I got. At what age do vibes vibe, like, go out of? Because, like, you just sounded so old. I don't think vibes have nothing to do with actual talent. Like, it's like a, a vibe. Imagine being in the studio and somebody plays something and it's whack as hell. You can't understand the person, but everybody, like, they on drugs, so they. Uh, uh, like, this a vibe. Yeah. This a vibe. No, y'all is high. What they be doing? Yeah. What they be doing? Yeah. What they be doing? The dance and the drunk voice is crazy. It's true. It's got they crazy. just be high talking about it's a vibe. All of those people you played just now had actual talent. They got things to actually say. Mm. Ari was talking about therapy. You know what I mean? Like, they yeah. got things to actually say. Salute so, to Ari Lennox, Brett Fire as an absolute. People yeah. with actual and talent. Kid. And Wiz And Wiz Kid. Oh, come on, man. Yeah. People with actual talent. It's a difference. Yeah, hopefully we get back to that. If you guys are into people with actually well, actual talent, tap into my playlist um, at Certified Vibe. Or at Nyla Simone, N Y L A S Y M O N E E. Click the link in bio and it's available. All right. Well, now let's get to the People's Choice Mix. You know, we throw it back on a Friday. And today is Neil's birthday. So let's start off the mix with some Neil. He's talented. And he it's is. The, and it's the Breakfast Club. Talented. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Jess Hilary, Charlemagne the God. We are the Breakfast Club. Laura LaRosa filling in for Jess. And we got a special guest in the building this morning. Yes, indeed. We have Axel Alonzo. Welcome. Thank you. How are you feeling this morning? I'm tired, but I'm good. Uh, you got a long week in Comic-Con, all weekend long. And is uh, they expect, what, over hundreds of thousands of people there. It's the biggest con now. It's the biggest con yeah. now. Axel, you've been in the comic book business for a long time. You was the former editor-in-chief of uh, Marvel Comics. What got you into the comic book world? Well, I got into the comic book world on a fluke. I, I interviewed at DC Comic Books uh, for an editor position. I sent in my resume, and the editor called me in and said, I wanted to meet you. I said, why is this? And he says, uh, I read an article you wrote for the Daily News about the use of the cannabis leaf in hip-hop culture. And uh, I interviewed a DA agent and the editor-in-chief of High Times Magazine. And uh, the High Times Magazine editor stole the guy's girlfriend. So he had a gripe. The High Times editor yeah, stole the yeah, guy's girlfriend. girlfriend. Okay. The editor's girlfriend. He said, I love you. You want a, want a job? I said, all right. <laughs> so I got into DC Comic Books at Vertigo. Hold on. So you got a job because somebody stole somebody's girlfriend? Yeah. That's crazy. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he never, I mean, you were qualified, but y'all never gave qualified, me yeah. You were very qualified. I was trying to get into all that. I took a big pay cut. What made you do that book. though? Because you, so New York Daily News, you were, were you working in a newsroom? I, I worked right. as, as, a, as a, 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 a freelancer, working gotcha. for multiple publications. Okay. And, uh, and I love comic books. I grew up reading comic books. I love them. An amazing art form, as you know. Mm -hmm. Amazing. They taught me to read, and I just thought I'd have an impact. So I went, I went to Vertigo Line, which did uh, adult oriented material mm -hmm. at DC Comic Books and had a good career there with books like Preacher and 100 Bullets. And then Marvel came a knock in at 2000, and I went to them. When they were in bankruptcy, and the company was in, in dire straits, you know? But I had so much fun. They gave me Spider-Man, the Hulk. Mm -hmm. What's not to like, you know? <laughs> you think comic book is, is uh, I guess, a, a form that's, that's dying? And the reason I asked that as a kid, uh, I know you're from California, but in New York, every bodega had comic yeah. books. Every store had comic books. When I went grocery shopping with my mom, she would go get groceries, and I'd go to the comic book section. So 
but now I don't see it as much. It almost feel like you, yeah. you ha- it has yeah. to be a destination spot. It has to be a Barnes and Nobles. It has to be a comic book store. Do you think it's a it's dying? And and how do you? That's a distribution problem. That's not a problem with the art form. The art form itself is inherently amazing. It's only as limited as your imagination and your mm-hmm. talent and your guts. So uh, the art form is going to evolve. Mm-hmm. There'll be more digital use of the medium. So again, for me, it's a distribution problem. Like you, I met comic books. I read comic books because my grandma would pick me up after school, take me to the dime store, and I'd buy a comic book off the rack, mm-hmm. you know, on a Friday. Mm-hmm. So it's a distribution problem. Once you solve that, there's no stopping us. The comic book market uh, is, is projected to be a $21 billion business by 2029. Like, it's still making billions of dollars. Oh, wow. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And does digital help or hurt? Reason because you know it's complimentary. I'm still, I'm, I'm still a guy that likes to hold a paper in yeah. hand. You know what I mean? It's it, complimentary. I mean, what it comes down to, like for me, I all my music I listen to on my iPad. You know, my, my, my phone. Mm-hmm. I have, I don't own CDs anymore. True. But with comic books, I select some things I read digitally. But the stuff I have to put on my shelf. You know, you just have to, like Illuminati. How many how many comic books do you have? How many comics do you have? Me, uh, too many. <laughs> how much is too many? Just if you could just round about. Oh man, oh man. Uh, Probably about two thousand. Yeah, oh yeah, my God. yeah, yeah. But it's for my when I was a kid, you know. Well, some it, of them, it, 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 some of them are investments then. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's exactly, what you tell yeah. your wife. That baby, these are investments. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Before before we get into AWA and uh, yeah. the, the Illuminati, tell them some of the things you did at Marvel. Some of the groundbreaking things that people will remember. Well, the thing I'm most proud of is that um, in 2015, I'm hip hop head, and for me, I was just really tired of seeing the lack of hip hop in comic books uh-huh. when hip hop is giving so much love to the form. Mm-hmm. Like all the, from Green Lantern to Johnny Blaze, mm-hmm. Iron Man, you name it, Ghostface, to see all this stuff happening in you know, hip hop giving so much love to Marvel comic books and Marvel being silent, I thought was inexcusable. So I did I did the hip hop variant program where we did um 128 covers that were based on classic hip hop album covers that, that spanned 30 years. Oh. <laughs> Everything from like Ultramagnetic MCs and School ED, mm-hmm. the OG stuff to to Future and Drake. That's dope. And, and uh, we, every single cover was uh, an homage to an, a classic album cover done by an amazing artist. And it just showed how many people drawing and writing comic books. You're bobbing your head hip hop when you're doing this, not the Beatles. <laughs> That's dope. Yeah. And, and also, too, you know, they used to call you a diversity superhero. You are a diversity superhero at Marvel. Marvel. And during your uh, five years at Marvel, um, correct me what, what I'm wrong about, you created Miss Marvel. There were a lot of things that involved. Yeah, yeah. Miles Morales. Miles Morales. Was on my watch. Kamala Khan. Yep. The female Black Panther. That's right. When we did that, everyone said, who wants that? Oh yep. my God, I remember seeing that. Yeah, I mean, when I did the female Black Panther, people were like, what's it about? Who cares about that? Now it's a whole movie. Yeah, it saved the franchise. That's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, it saved the franchise. I mean, what's not to like about a female Black Panther? You, you did a female That's Thor. A female Thor. Yep. Which also Black Captain the America movie. 2000. Black Captain America. I did Isaiah Bradley is Black Captain America. Because I didn't buy... The origin story of Captain America. I don't agree. I don't believe that Uncle Sam in 1940 would have experimented on white boys. That's right. <laughs> I talked with, right. I re- I talk with Robert Morales, the writer. He was a, a journalist. He said, I agree. I'll write this. We got Kyle Baker, iconic artist, to do the, the series. It was about a man named Isaiah Bradley, who was the first guy who was experimented on with the super soldier serum. So the first Captain America was black. Now that got me death threats. I was about wow. to ask you yeah. what was your pushback in your life like? Because you were early in the DEI. Tons, tons, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm half Mexican and my wife is Korean, so I gotta be. Gotcha, okay. <laughs> yeah. so, you did the Asian Hulk, Amadeus show? Yeah, 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 yeah. I did Amadeus show as well. My wife is Korean, so my, my nephews were amazed by that. The thing I... Blew their mind. The thing I enjoy about all your characters, all of them have made it to the TV or big screen at this point. You know, Miles Morales, we, we, we know how those movies are. They're great. The uh, Miss Marvel is... A, D- a Disney Plus show. Exactly. Female Thor was in the movies. Uh, you know Shuri is the Black Panther now in the movie. Amadeus Cho is coming yeah. to Marvel now. Isaiah Bradley is in, in uh, the TV show Captain America Winter Soldier and he's going to be in the movie. You, you, you. Well, I feel validated because for me, I'm a young Mexican kid and I'm looking at these superheroes. And where's a Mexican superhero? Yeah. There ain't none. I like Black Panther the most. Why? Because he had the best costume on Earth. Yep. I was disappointed when he was black. I wanted to be Mexican. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So, so and, hold on, <laughs> and one more thing. And you signed Ta-Nehisi Coates, Ta-Nehisi Coates to yeah. write the yeah. Black Panther yeah. series. Yeah, Reggie Hudlin before him yes. was Black Panther for six years. Mm-hmm. He reinvigorated the character, and then and then Ta-Nehisi Coates came on and did an amazing run as well. Axel oh, yeah. Alonso was a legend. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> I, wanted, I wanted to ask, since you created a lot of these characters, do you get, I guess, equity in these characters? Like when these, because like I mean, you you created these, and, and like you said, some of these characters are saving the franchise, making movies, and all that. 
Yeah, I wouldn't say I created them. I wouldn't say I created them so much as I was involved in their creation. In the case of the Black Panther, Shuri, Reggie Hudlin said to me, let's make things up. Let's put Shuri in the costume. I said, I'm down. Let's do this. It makes perfect sense to us to do this. It's about time we did that. Amadeus Cho was the same thing. Mm-hmm. I thought, how about we have a new Hulk? Optimistic, fun, not, you know, gloom and doom Bruce Banner. We have with Amadeus Cho. Next thing you know, we have a Korean Hulk. So for me, it was a necessity. I wanted to see characters like myself when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. So I, I can imagine people want to see themselves. That's right. Seeing, seeing Spider-Man peel back his mask and you see an, a black face, it's, it's seismic. That's right. And how did you hook up with, with Charlemagne? I know we don't have much time because we got we get this on now. How did you hook up with Charlemagne? Charlemagne started talking with my partner some years ago. His interest in, in promoting black artists. Did you ever see his fishing? tattoo? Yeah. I have not. I've seen that in, in a picture, I think. Oh. You have a comic? <laughs> you have a comic tattoo? I have Wolverine yeah. tattooed on my arm with a microphone in the same. But I got it when I was 16, 17 years old. Oh, okay. So it looks terrible. It looks horrible. <laughs> okay. I'll check it out later. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Okay. But yeah, but so how did y'all get it? So y'all said... This is what you want to do. And then how do you come up with the franchise and, and Illuminati and all that other stuff? And what you well, wanted to call it? And- when I understood what Sherman's goals were, I said, I just so happened to have this amazing pitch called Black Illuminati by Brian Edward Hill, mm-hmm. filmmaker and comic book writer. That's amazing. It's about the number one conspiracy theory of the day, the urban legend. I mean, you see Mecca Platinum star going like this on TV. That's right. Someone shows up in, in pants with sigils on it. P. Diddy's mansion is raided. That's right. It's a conversation. Who's out there? It's the most enduring urban legend. This story leans hard into that. Mm-hmm. Any resemblance to characters living or dead is coincidental unless you don't want it to be. It may or may not be based on a true story. <laughs> That's right. So when you see these DJs getting aired out by some of these executives and they look a little similar or they have names like <laughs> DJ Jealousy, don't think that it has anything to do with anybody you know. Are they fighting with baby oil? What are you talking about? Don't worry about it. <laughs> You'll see. <laughs> if you, if you, you, you know, know, baby oil, not the baby I'm oil. It turns into special force field of power. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> And oh my go. god, yeah. is that is she laying in baby oil? This is the cover. Tell them about the story. No damn baby oil. Oh. It's a supernatural thriller. Oh, her body is tea. A young woman travels to Los Angeles after the death of her sister. The cops say the sister died of a drug overdose. Sister does not believe this is the case. She investigates and then finds out that there's a, a secret society that snakes through the quarters of power and their currency is fame and fortune. They'll give you fame and fortune for a price. You don't want to know what that price is. Mm. Mm. You mm. want to pay it. So the sister believes her sister paid the price, and she investigates. So it's a supernatural whodunit. Wow, that's right. We got Dennis, the, the iconic Dennis Cowan as the artist, founder of Milestone Comic Books, mm-hmm. and and Bill Sienkiewicz, mm-hmm. industry icon, covers for RZA, EPM Day, you name it. These guys are legit. Wow. What's the t- Sanford Green, my Sanford guy Green, Sanford yeah. from South Carolina, South Carolina, he did the cover art. Is isn't the name like? Is there some sort of homage to uh, Illmatic, right? More or less, yeah. Mm-hmm. So- <laughs> yeah, Il Illuminati, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, the writer who, or the guy who created the pitch, is he just like a Nas fan or like what's the... Well, the, I, the concept for him wasn't so much rooted in hip hop as the, the conspiracy theory. Okay. Mm-hmm. He wanted to write a book about the conspiracy theory, supernatural murder mystery. Got you. Okay. And again, it has to be said in the world of hip hop out of necessity. Mm-hmm. So again, that's really where he came from. Not so much inspired by Nas or any particular artist, that's just the, the, the whole milieu. You gotcha. know, Lauren, uh, like, you know, every day we wake up, there's a new conspiracy theory. You go oh, on YouTube, people go down these rabbit holes, and they talk about, oh, no. you know, what may or may not be happening in the industry. So what once you, again, not, yeah. this may or may not be based on a true story, mm. okay? And you can go to Kickstarter uh, right now, and if you type in Ill, I-L-L-U-M-I-N-A-T-I, or you type in Charlemagne, um, you can, you know, get a copy. And we got all types of stuff. We got merchandise. You see uh, Axel wearing the hat. Mm-hmm. Right. This dope little hat. Yeah. And we got the hoodies. And today you're going to be at Comic-Con, right? What time? You'll be on a panel, correct? 3.45. Yes. 3.45, we'll be in room 1CO3. Uh, myself, Axel Alonzo, Dennis Cohen, and the good brother Rob Markman will be moderating. So we'll be at uh, New York Comic Con today at 3.45 p.m., room 1CO3. Myself, Dennis Cohen, the good brother Axel Alonzo, and Rob Markman will be moderating. So we'll see you there today. Yeah, we appreciate you for joining us. And definitely check out Il... Well, is the name of it just Il or Il Luminati? Il... Illuminati. 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 24 hours to go. 24 hours to go. Act now. Act now. Yeah. Yes. You can go right. to Kickstarter right now. You got 24 more hours uh, to order a copy. And then when we drop it? Uh, it'll, it's fulfilled within six months. Yes. Yeah. Fulfilled within six yep. months. Okay. All right. Well, you got a positive note for the people? Yes, I do have a positive note. Uh, the positive note is simply this. Peace is the result of retraining your mind to process life as it is rather 
than as you think it should be. That's from the great Dr. Wayne W. Dyer. Y'all have a great weekend. Breakfast Club, bitches! Y'all finished or y'all done?